Cam collars are really cute on blouses for women and you can find them also in shirts for men. The technique is the same and you might be trying to avoid the technique or trying to do shortcuts. Even I've shown you how to do shortcuts of this technique. No more shortcuts, let's do it the real way. I've made it super accessible for you. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today is about collar sewing. There are different types of collars, you know, you'll find them on blouses, on shirts, for men, for women. Some have a button placket, a collar stand, and a separate collar. And I would say that those are a little bit more time intensive to sew than your camp collar. This is something that I've got on right now. It is black, maybe you won't see it. This is the Melody Dolman from Love Notions. Now I'm not showing you the completed garment that I've sewn the collar onto. I will show you that tomorrow. And you haven't heard it from me, it might be the feature Friday pattern, so keep your eyes open for that. And I've sewn it in a completely different way. It's all about having challenges in your sewing, getting over hurdles. I've had to get over a huge hurdle this week with my sewing that just really deflated me for a hot minute, but I was just able to pick myself up and keep sewing so I could complete the garment. I wanna to talk to you about that a little bit tomorrow because we all encounter barriers and challenges in our sewing, so keep an eye out for tomorrow's video. But let's continue with how to sew this camp collar. What is common between these types of collars is that you have a collar piece sandwiched between a facing and the neckline. This would be the neckline that goes straight down and then this will fold over like that forming a lapel of sorts. I'm putting images here so you can see what I'm talking about and it's a really really nice look. I love the V that you get. You have a little overlap there. You have buttons going down and you'll find these on men's tropical shirts, you know, those with really wild prints. I know my son really wants to have a shirt like this and I still haven't made him one. And I've been making these for a very long time. The technique is not too difficult. There are a few steps that need a little bit of precision. And you might find some patterns that have a separate facing for this central area or it's just integrated and folded. It'll be in the same pattern piece. I will be putting diagrams of these things as I talk about them so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. So the only difference between them is that you'll be sewing on a facing onto the center front or that piece will already be one piece already and instead of a seam in the center here, you will just have a fold. This is the case with what I'm wearing right now. It's an integrated facing. It's just a fold right there, not a separate facing. But other than there being a straight seam that's extra, if, if there is a separate facing, the way that you put the collar in and all that is exactly the same. Now you'll find these collars with different types of styles of shirts or blouses. You might find some that have a dolman sleeve, like this one, the Melody Dolman, as the name says, or you'll find others have a normal setting sleeve, others have a raglan sleeve, and you will see this type of collar with all these styles. It doesn't really matter what type of garment you're sewing. If it has this type of collar and you see it there, this video will help you no matter what you're sewing. So don't get hung up on what type of sleeve I'm sewing or what type of facing I'm sewing. The way that you're going to put the collar in is the same and you'll see it in detail and you'll be able to do it and you'll stop avoiding these and not sewing them because it is super nice when you make yourself a woven blouse or shirt like this. It feels really good to do something like this for yourself. I have an example here to show you so you know what I'm talking about and what happens inside. This is the Tropicana shirt from Wardrobe by Me that I made the other day. This is the center front and you can see that there is a separate facing and there is a seam inside right there. And the facing always just reaches the shoulder seam, as you can see, and it's folded in. That's on both sides. And then in the center, you have this collar that's folded in and, and edge stitched. But for that to happen neatly on these corners, you need to do a little snip. That is the area that maybe when you're looking at instructions for a certain pattern, you might think, oh, you know, I'm not ready to do that, you know, snipping, you know. I'm telling you, this video is going to help you. And this is one of the ones I've sewn where I have sewn this central area with the machine. I've edge stitched it down and beautiful result, very nice. This is a dress that I've made, McCall's. I can't remember the number, I'll put it on screen where there is also a camp collar. You can see it there. This one also has a separate facing on the inside and you can see there is a seam in there. And then you have your collar piece coming from between the neckline and the facing inside. 
the facing reaches the shoulder seam as it always will with every single style you sew like this and then this central area is on its own in this case i folded this upper collar inside and slip stitch this all very neatly i didn't use the machine for this one and then as always i'm trying to look for ways to simplify some techniques for you and I have filmed in the past two shortcut videos on how to do this type of collar without having to worry about that little snip and all of those things. One of them was using the Melody Dolman from Love Notions as an example. And it's all got to do with drafting a facing for the back. That means that you don't need to snip into the collar to push the seam allowance inside because you have a front facing and a back facing and you end up having a facing all across the neckline, front and back. And you can just sandwich your collar in between and just sew all the way across, flip it and you're done. So it's a really nice way to do this. And I like doing this with fabrics that have a little bit more structure. It looks nice when you top stitch that facing down. Now, if I wanted to do this in a crepe or just a really delicate fabric, I wouldn't want to have that extra facing that's interface creating bulk at the back. Some fabrics don't really like to be top stitched that well. It doesn't really turn out that neatly, like rayon shali, some crepe, some chiffon maybe. I would just do the traditional camp collar and do the snip to avoid having that bulk there on that type of delicate fabric. But for cotton, you know, quilting cottons, rayon linen blends. I, this is a cotton linen blend shirting. This type of facing is perfect. And you can do the shortcut there if you want to. It turns out really, really well. The other video I filmed with the shortcut was with the Tropicana shirt from Wardrobe by Me. This one has raglan sleeves. And the raglan sleeve is actually a two-piece sleeve. There is a seam down the center of your shoulder. So to create that back facing, it took a few more steps, but you can still create it and I have a facing all along the inside. That means I didn't need to snip into anywhere in this one too. So if you've tried these shortcuts and you're really happy, maybe you are wanting to think about maybe trying the traditional one and giving it a go if you haven't done it yet. You will find differences between patterns that really won't affect the way the collar is sewn at all. But it's all got to do with the under collar. On some patterns, you will just have one pattern piece that you cut twice, one will be the upper collar, one will be the under collar, they will be the same size and shape, everything, both cut on grain. You will interface one of them and you will not interface the other. And I'll talk more about that actually inside the video so I can tell you why I like what I do. <laughs> and you will find other patterns that have an under collar that is also cut on grain but is slightly shorter than the upper collar, so it's slightly smaller. And when you're sewing them together, you need to ease one into the other and that will just favor the seam of the collar here at the back to roll back so you don't see the seam of the collar. Now the third option that you'll see with the under collar is that it's a small piece cut on the bias with a center seam and it, it'll be underneath you won't see it and the reason to have that under collar cut on the bias is a really good one you know fabric on the bias folds better and the ability to conform to the shape much better this is folded so you have less bulk underneath here on the under collar and in general just this collar will sit so much better if that under collar is cut on the bias so i'll just show you a little clip of what it looks like when your under collar piece is slightly smaller than the upper collar but they're both cut on grain let's see that is the upper collar that has been interfaced and the under collar that hasn't been interfaced upper collar is slightly larger than the under collar this is the upper collar i've got the under collar on top you can see how much smaller it is from the upper collar that's down there interfaced one right there and I'm hoping the feed dogs are going to ease in that excess length there and on the top. I'll show you a tiny clip of what it looks like when your under collar is a smaller piece cut on the bias. You cut two, you have a center seam. That is the front facing that has already been interfaced. That is the under collar. Those are two pieces cut on the bias and just one upper collar there cut on a straight of grain and it's already been interfaced. These are the two under collar pieces together. I'm going to sew them at the center back seam. I'm just going to finger press this open. It's linen, so it's quite easy to do that. You just fold it up like an accordion and let it go, and it's completely pressed without needing to burn your fingers or risk stretching out the under collar. After sewing this, place it so that you have the bottom edge that has the two notches down on the bottom. 
that's where the notches are but I'm going to place this one right sides up and then I'm going to take the upper collar that is interfaced one and place this one right sides together with that one there are the notches on this one so you have the notches facing down and we need to match that up and sew from the edge here up across and then down completely from the edge so that's pinned the under collar is slightly shorter here so you can see if you line this up here on the top you can see that it's slightly shorter so on this area you will need to stretch you can see I'm going to need to stretch this when I sew it just a little bit. As I mentioned, it doesn't really matter what type of under collar you're working with according to the pattern that you have. You will put the upper collar and the under collar together, you will flip them right sides out and the process of sandwiching it between the facing and doing the snip will be all the same. A general step that you'll do with all of your patterns that might have this collar is stay stitch that neckline as soon as you cut your pieces before you move them anywhere or do anything to them before you sew your shoulder seams before you do anything please stay stitch all those necklines the neckline of your shirt or blouse and of the facing and if it's just one piece and integrate it all along the top along the back neckline in the garment that i've sewn and filmed for you today I have replaced stay stitching with using a tiny strip of interfacing along the neckline and I've shown you that on other videos in the past it's something I really like to do especially with lightweight fabrics it gives me a lot of security that I haven't stretched out that neckline and before I take the pattern piece off the fabric I go to the iron very gently place it there and fuse to make sure I'm conserving that neckline shape length then I remove my paper pattern from the fabric and I start working and it really works to conserve that shape this is the type of collar I'm talking about you have a collar piece a lapel that folds over and you'll see this both of men's and women's wear let's see how to sew it here I have my facing right sides together with the front right there I've aligned the edges there I have my red marks that will help me put the collar together later and they match each other on each side so it's just a long seam that I'll sew at 3 8 I'm gonna press that seam open and just pretend that that seam is not there and just carry on putting everything together and this is how it's going to look right there I've got the dark area I have two collar pieces here the one that you see on top that is interfaced will be the upper collar for me and the one that's underneath that is not interfaced will be the under collar in different pattern instructions you'll find differences some say to interface the under collar some say to not interface the upper collar which would be the opposite of what I have here it won't change the sewing construction at all but I like to interface the upper collar because that is the one that is visible when you wear the shirt or the blouse and when that piece is interfaced I find it smoother also the under collar will be folded towards the back and I think it being a structure that's softer and easier to bend will fall nicer than having a more structured under collar that is the reason that I like to interface upper collars and not interface under collars so that is my take on that you can do whatever you want you know one method is not wrong the other one isn't right there's all these differences that you'll find in sewing. I have a mark there for my center back and then there's two little marks here on the side. These will match the shoulder seams and in theory it would be where you would do a little snip but I would like to do that snip later once I've already got this collar pinned onto the neckline to make sure that everything is really matching and that is actually going to be at the shoulder seams. I would not want to do this right now but there is something I'll do now and right here on top of where I'm going to snip in later, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a stay stitch right there, just a small little amount right at the seam allowance that will be used later at 3 8 And it's just going to give that area a little bit of structure and I'll do it with a small stitch length. So it'll be just a tiny stitch right there and then right there on that other. So 3 8 seam allowance, just a little around that area. That's what that looks like and I'll just do the same here. After doing that tiny bit of stay stitching right there, I have both collar pieces together, right sides together. What we want to do now is sew these slanted short ends and then all the way across the top of the collar and then down this slanted edge. Don't get confused, you're not sewing the edge that has the marks on the bottom, the notch marks. 
that needs to be left open you are sewing the top curved edge that is longer this edge down here is shorter and you have the collar piece slant outwards like that now when I get to this point I don't like to pivot I like to sew straight down and then start again like that I think this intersection of seams helps turning this around without having to snip into anything and just folding it onto itself it gives a really nice little crisp corner what I'm going to do now is just trim these seam allowances in half to avoid bulk I'm just going to trim them down a little shorter you don't really need all that seam allowance tucked inside this collar piece Right here in these intersections, what I'm going to do is fold these seams right on top of each other towards the under collar. So I'll fold it back and fold it again, hold it nice and firmly there and then just flip it while holding this. You will usually get a very nice, nice corner there. And I didn't need to trim into anything and make this area weaker by cutting away. So that's very nice. Of course, I need to tidy this up and press it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just fold it onto itself and flip. So after turning these, I'll just go ahead and press the seam allowance, tidy up this collar so that it's nice and neat. And then I'll be back to actually sew this onto the neckline. Okay, here's the collar pressed nice and neat. This darker collar is my upper collar, the one that I have interfaced. And the under collar, I have a lighter type of print, although it is the same fabric, it is different. The other thing I've done after turning it and pressing it, making the corners neat and everything, is in this center area of the upper collar between those notches that will match the shoulders later I pressed it in by 3 8 so that can be ready for later I don't need to worry about that anymore it's already been done so it's not the whole bottom it's just from that notch to that notch around that area I've already pressed it in I have not done a snip yet what I'm going to do now and it's optional you can top stitch and I'm going to do that at a quarter of an inch like that and you can opt to do it or not, depends on the type of fabric, whether I would want to. I think this fabric is really light and I think the top stitching will be, will be good for it. I'm going to use my quarter inch foot to top stitch this. Here I have the top of the blouse. This is the back and this is the right side of the fabric. I've got the under collar right sides together with a neckline my under collar is the one that's not interfaced but yours might be depending on what you're doing and there was a mark on the under collar the center back and i'd also made a mark on my neckline you can see it right there you need to have stay stitched your neckline before doing anything before doing shoulder seams all of that but i've replaced stay stitching with fusing a little bit of interfacing there i think that works really well for me for lightweight fabrics like this so that's why you don't see stay stitching, you see this instead. But make sure you do something to stabilize that neckline. This pin that you see here is matching the under collar to the center of the back. They're both together. This is the other notch that you have that will match the shoulder seam. You can see my French seams there. And you have the same on both sides. Now that matches really well. I can be happy that it's the same length and it's all the same. And that means that the notch I have on this other upper collar is okay, it's going to match that. And now that I've seen it with my own eyes that it's going to be exact and it's going to match, now I'm going to snip into there where that line is, right up to that stay stitch I had done before. The stay stitch is really helpful because it helps you know what seam allowance you need to snip into. And also it gives that area a bit of structure like that. Now... The other side, you can't see the thread on the bobbin, so I wouldn't be worried about needing to remove that. So now this area that I had folded in can just stay folded in. I'll put a little pin to just keep it there and keep it from folding itself out. So this is how your upper collar is going to look. You're going to have a raw edge, but at that notch, it'll be folded in. Now I can match this little short edge to that notch right there and keep pinning both of these layers together along the neckline up to that mark right there that inner mark on your neckline so 
I'll pin that one first actually. So the edge of the collar is going to meet that notch right there. This needs to be accurate right there. Now that I've pinned that there, I'm going to go ahead and pin this short edge right there that's by itself and matching it right to that notch there, right at the shoulder seam on the other side and they'll be together right there. And then I'll pin the rest of this collar piece to this neckline. It is curved so just make sure you match up the raw edges really well. I think a 3 8 seam allowance for techniques like this is perfect, not too large, that makes sewing these curves difficult. Remember this is folded in there, remember you have your upper collar folded right there partially around the center and you have two layers of collar here but from this cut that we did you just have one layer of collar that's under collar. Now this is my facing but if you have the integrated facing you will have a section where you fold this onto itself there and you will just have a fold. You won't have that seam that I have. You might find patterns that have a separate facing but you can see that that notch matches the edge of the collar right there as well and that notch matches the one on the other side. So you need to make sure that that matches really really well. Put a pin there. I'm actually going to use the same pins I'd used before to pin again. This time I'm sandwiching the collar between the facing and the neckline up to here. Now I have a raw edge here. I'm just going to fold it in and ignore it. It will be hidden inside so you don't need to worry that much about it. But that fold should match the shoulder seam right there. So you fold back that 3 8 seam allowance right there and that matches perfectly. So put another pin right there. It's fiddly. There's lots of pinning to do. But once you have everything done and everything matched up, it's just one straight seam basically that will put all this together. Okay, I'm done on this side. Again, on this facing, you folded in that 3 8 seam allowance and that fold is matching the shoulder seam right there. And now we repeat the same thing on the other side. I'm going to take my edge of the collar, match it to that inner notch right there. Make sure it's very accurate there and then keep pinning this. Remember, I've got this raw little cut edge that is going to match that notch right there. You can see my red mark. It's going to match the shoulder seam and now matching along the neckline. Now bringing your integrated facing or facing like in my case over, matching that notch of the facing to the edge of the collar right there and to the notch underneath matches perfectly. Again, if you're doing the integrated facing, you will have a fold of fabric there, not the seam that I have. So just ignore that. It won't affect the way you sew the whole wrist of the collar. Now here, fold the seam allowance in. The fold needs to match the shoulder seam on the other side. And it does. And I'm using the same pins that are underneath to pin this again like that. <laughs> if you are doing the integrated facing and it's not interfaced like mine is, you would have also needed to stay stitch all this area when you just started. So I've got everything pinned. I'm going to start sewing from this edge at 3 8 catching all of these layers, going through there, making sure I don't catch that folded area that I have right there so that it stays free. My needle will go right next to it and make sure this is out of the way that I'm not catching it. And then I'm just sewing on these two layers. Same as there, I'll sew right on the edge there and then I'll start catching all the layers up to there. And then we can do some snips in this curve right here, along here, it's curved too. And then we can flip it the other way. Okay, I'll get you really close up here. This is where the fold of the facing is. Seam allowance is being folded towards the inside. This is where that edge is folded. So I'm going to sew right along that edge there. I was right next to it but I didn't catch this fabric. I'll make sure to keep this out of the way while I sew. And here we're getting to the other side where the fold is right there. I also don't want to catch it but I want to sew right next to it. So I'll just keep it out of the way with my hands. Seam Ripper is really handy for sewing these places. Ok, 
Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and do some snips here because this area is nice and curved. Three eighths of an inch seam allowance is okay for you to have in there. I wouldn't trim it down smaller. If it was five eighths or a half an inch, I would. After snipping all along the curves of the neckline, we can flip it to the other side. Here on this corner, I'm also gonna fold this to itself, fold them on the intersection and flip, and you'll get a really pointy corner right there. Collar is coming from within, so we have facing on one side, we have the neckline on the other. You can see the distance between where the collar comes out of and that corner on both sides and that's why that notch there was so important and you need to be accurate there so that the distance here is the same. So from the corner on both, the collar pieces are coming out from the exact same distance right there. This is how it looks inside. We still have some snips to do on one more step. This is the upper collar, the one that I have interfaced and that we had previously pressed up 3 eighths of an inch in this central area. And now this seam that we have just done, this needs to be up and this needs to cover it like that. But we have to release this little area here with a snip so that this area could be also tucked in there. So right along where that fold is, we're going to snip right up to there through all these layers. And on this side too, right along that fold. It helps that this fold is actually black so you can see it. Just We can push all of this seam allowance up like that. And this folded edge of the upper collar is going to cover that area right there. See, and now we can meet this folded edge to the seam. And that's how that's going to be neat. And if you're wondering about that bulk right there, just push it aside. And this folded edge will cover it right there. And then this gets slip stitched on right there on the edge, the top part of the facing. And that's how that is going to finish. Really neatly, you're going to have a folded edge there and then fold it there and all that little bulk is going to be tucked in under there and we do the same here we've done that snip so we push the seam allowance up and cover it with this folded edge i'll go and press this press that seam allowance up tidy it all up and then you have two options you can close this area by hand doing a slip stitch invisible or you can sew it right on the edge just edge stitch from there to there both options won't be seen from the outside. This will be inside your garment. You won't see it when it's worn. So you choose what you want to do. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and iron this, tidy it up, and then I'll, I'll choose what I'm gonna do. Okay, I've already done some things off camera. I pressed the seam, tidied up that corner really well, pushed all the seam allowance in there. And that seam there, I have already hand sewn it down, the facing to the shoulder seam, so that's done on both sides and I have hand basted on the edge right there. So all that's left now is to sew by machine from there to there, right on the edge very carefully. I could have slip stitched it, but I'll just do it by machine. Why not? Then that will be the end of this collar and all that's left to do is the side seams, cuffs, the buttonholes, the hem, all those things. But let's just sew across there neatly, right on the edge. pulled out the basting stitches and that's done it's all very neat you can see that i did plan to cut my upper collar matching the print on this part of the facing i hope this is helpful now in some patterns or most of them you will see the instructions telling you to snip into that upper collar first as one of the first steps and to fold that in before attaching the collar onto the neckline but I would rather not do that. You don't need to do it before sewing it onto the neckline. And why do I say this? Because it's really hard to control your fabric. You might be working with different types of material that will tend to stretch and deform more than others. You know, maybe you forgot to stay stitch right away. Maybe you handled it a little bit. Maybe you want to accurate with your seam allowance. And you know, those notches might be an eighth of an inch off the shoulder seams. And it might make a difference, you know, if you've already done that snip, you can't unsnip it and do another one. You just can't go back from there. So I would rather see with my own eyes that those notches are exactly at the shoulder seam, that everything is perfect before I actually go and cut into fabric. Because, you know, what, what other thing could you do? You could cut other collar pieces and assemble a new one and do it again. And it wouldn't take up that much fabric, but it would take up some of your time. And who wants to go and do something again when you could avoid it by doing that snip at a later stage like I showed you there. So these are super practical things that I encounter when I'm sewing and I want to show you them because I know they work. I'd love it if these videos helped you avoid, you know, uh, having some frustration, having to do things again. So 
I really hope this helps the concepts you've seen here of the famous nip will not only apply to blouses and shirts, you will see something similar in some denim jackets or some type of workwear jackets where the technique will be very, very similar. When you start seeing these concepts and order of events on shirts that you start sewing for yourself or blouses, you know, once you start progressing in your sewing journey and you get to jackets, you have a deja vu moment where you're like, oh, I've, I've seen this before, I know how to do this. You know, even if it's a completely different garment and a slightly different technique, there are similarities when you're sewing that you're gonna be able to recognize and just feel good that you've done it before and it's not something completely new. I hope this was enjoyable. I know these videos get like no views, but I still want to make them for you because I know that there are a group of you who really enjoy them, so I'm not gonna stop making them. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.